All right. Ain't it awesome to be in His presence? Yeah. 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 somebody would come to this keyboard. You know, it was vacant for, for some time. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And, and honestly, and I ain't ever told, told them this, but we kind of knew who it was before y'all ever got here. And that's the truth. And immediately, God quickened their spirit and knew that, that, that He was going to send y'all here. So y'all give them a hand clap for all that. That's awesome. take off. I want to talk to you this morning about a very familiar scripture. Y'all going to say, man, I should have went to children's church this morning because uh, we're going to talk about David and Goliath. But we're going to talk about it in a way that you ain't never thought about it before. And I think God's going to set somebody free in this house. Amen? Amen. I believe it. I believe it. Somebody say with me one, some, one time that there was more than one giant. There was more than one giant. You know, the Bible puts a lot of emphasis on, on Goliath, but all through David's life, he slew giants. And they wasn't really fleshly giants, but they were giants nonetheless. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It's not always the, the nine foot six giant standing in front of you is what's going to have to be fought, right? It's, sometimes it's the things that come in and slip in when, when nobody else is looking. That's the giants that sometimes you have to fight. And it's not always a public giant. Sometimes it's a private job. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're going to read this story. Y'all don't have to stand with me. I'm going to read. And I don't know how much of it I'm going to read. I might skip around. But turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm just going to talk about it as we go along. 1 Samuel 17. Start at verse 4. I'm going to set it up just for a second. The armies of the armies of God, had, uh, or the armies of the Israelites, they they taken themselves against the Philistines, and, and they'd set up they'd set up one on this side and one on the other side, and there was a valley in between them. And every day they would assemble their armies together, and they would get ready to fight. And they, and and back in those days, sometimes it was a custom if if both of those armies had entered down into that valley, then there would have been a whole lot of bloodshed. There would have been a whole lot of loss of life. So what they would do a lot of times is they would say, who do you have to offer for this battle? And they would send the best that they had. And then they'd ask the other side, who do you have to offer for this battle? And they would send the best they had. And they would meet and they would fight. And they would fight and whoever won would be the representation of the other, of the other army. So if you won, it was just the same as your army win. Let's, let's read right here in verse 4. And it said, He went out a champion. I'm going to stop right there just for a second. We're going to take our time. A champion means, you can't, you know, this is taken, for instance, like in boxing. How do you become a champion? You have to win something, right? So that, that, my Bible says he's a champion. So that means he's fought before and he's won before. Amen? He had done it before. He was a champion. <laughs> out, out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath, of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. If you study that out, he was nine foot, six inches tall. So he's almost as tall as a basketball goal. Y'all know how tall that is. He was a big man. He was a big man. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with the coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. If you study that out, he had about 135 pounds of armor on. That's a whole lot of armor. Amen. And he and he had graves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron of being the shield that went before him. He had an armor bearer in front of him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to the battle? What he was saying to them was, Why are you even showing up? Why, why do you think you can even show up against me? And he says, Am I not a Philistine? And yet you are servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight me and kill me, 
they, we will be your servants, but if you prevail against him and we kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. When Saul and all the Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I want to tell you something right there. I want you to think back. Can you remember the story whenever they anointed Saul? They said Saul was the biggest man in Israel. He was head and shoulders taller than anybody else. The Bible says that he was head and shoulders taller than anybody else. And, and if you look at the front line of who was there, then you would look at David's, the, David's brothers. And the Bible says whenever, whenever uh, they was going to be anointed and they went to the house of Jesse and they said, who do you have that we're going to anoint to be the next king? The Bible says that... Uh, let me find my notes here. Y'all stay with me just a second. Stay with me just a second. Skip the head myself. That's what happened. Praise God. But whenever they, whenever they went and they said, they said that we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to anoint somebody to be king. The Bible says that there was Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah. And they said e Eliab, whenever, whenever Saul got there to anoint them, they looked at him and he said, "This must be the one. This must be the one that we're going to anoint because his physical presence." was greater than any of the other sons. His physical presence was greater. And then the Bible names these three. And that's the other ones except for David. But David was the least of them. David was the youngest. David was the least. But what I want you to bring your attention to is that giant was coming down. He was saying, how dare you stand up and, and act like you're going to fight when I know that you're not going to fight. So you got Saul there. Saul's head and shoulders bigger than anybody else. Then you got the three best, the biggest that, that Jesse has to offer out of his house and they're there and, and every one of them is scared. Every one of them is scared. And he said, and he said, now David was the son of the Ephraite of, of Bethlehem Judah. He was out of the house of praise whose name was Jesse and he had eight sons and the man went among them and the old man in, in the days of Saul and the three oldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul into battle. And their names was Eliab, the firstborn, Abinadab, and Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep in Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself for forty days. For forty days he had been coming out there, lining up and saying, what are y'all going to do? You ever had a giant in your life that just come back time and time again? Or am I the only one that's ever fought that kind of a giant? That, that no matter what you do, no matter what kind of presentation you have, no matter how you stand up against it, it just keeps showing itself time and time again. It just keeps showing itself time and time again. The thing about a giant is it likes to talk. And then it likes to talk to you. It likes to talk about how bad it is and, and how, how much it's going to do harm to you and how it's going to put you down. And, and you're nothing in, in the sight of this giant. You ain't anything in the sight of this giant. But the giant just comes back time and time again, no matter how hard you fight. It seems like, man, I've done the best I can. I can't do nothing else. I've tried. I've come to church. I've prayed. But then you wake up the next morning and the giant's there again screaming at you. I, I, I may be the only one in this place that has had that giant in my life. And I'm going to tell you what, whenever you've got a giant in your life that confronts you every morning, the Bible says that every morning and every evening. So you had to wake up here in the giant and you had to go to bed going to be there in the morning. It's a big giant when you can't get out of it. When you can't get out of the sound that he's making to you. When you can't do nothing. And the Bible says they stood up and, and Goliath, what Goliath was saying was, why are you even standing up? Because you know good and well you ain't going to fight me. I've come out here for 40 days and you still ain't confronting me. You got the biggest man up there, Saul. You got all the Jesse's favorite warriors. But it ain't, it ain't none of you going to stand up to me. Ain't none of you going to stand up to me. And Jesse said to David the son, he said, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp of thy brother and carry these ten cheeses to the captain, their thousand, and look how 
thy brethren fair and take thee pledge. And he wanted him to come back and tell him how, how the brothers were doing. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left his sheep with the keeper and took and he went to Jesse as Jesse commanded him and he came into the trench as the host was going forth to fight and for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. They was getting ready to have a lot of bloodshed. They, they done lined up and they was getting ready to have a lot of bloodshed. David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army where, the, where his brothers were and Cain saluted his brothers. And as he talked to them, Somebody say, sometimes you just got to be in the right place at the right time. Amen? Amen. Behold, there came up a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name. And out of the armies of the Philistines, he spake according to the words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel were, when they saw the man, they fled from him, and they were so afraid. Okay, right there, the first time they got scared of him, what happened? They heard it. They heard it. How many of you know that, that sometimes if you hear it long enough, then you'll eventually start seeing it. If you hear it in your mind long enough, you'll eventually start seeing it and playing it out in your mind. But, but they said when they heard him, they were scared. When they saw him, they were scared. And they was just terrified because of this giant. But David, David was just there by chance and he heard it. And he said, all the men of Israel were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is coming up? Surely to, buy, to defy Israel is he come up and he shall be that, that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches. He will give his daughter and he will make his father's house free in Israel. This is where I'm going right here, verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? Philistine, however they say, and taketh away the reproach of Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? See, so right there, I'm going to stay right there just for a minute because back in those days, it was, and, and even back, even back in uh, in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 9, David asked if if there, there's, a, there's a covenant. There's a covenant back in Abraham. Whenever, whenever God told him, said, "If you're going to, if you're going to go out and your seed's going to be great, then you have to do something. You're going to have to, you're going to have to be circumcised." God said that that's that's a symbolic of a covenant, of a covenant of of, of divine order, and, and anything that you do in the flesh, God says, "I'm going to match it in the spirit." And you're going to, there's going to be a covenant that follows you all the days of your life. It says you do it to yourself and you do it to every, every kid that's born after this, you're going to circumcise them. So what David's seen, David's seen something that nobody else seen. Even the biggest warriors, they didn't see it. They stood up and they seen a nine foot six giant. But David seen somebody that was out of covenant. Yeah. David seen somebody that, that wasn't under the covering of God. You say, well, what is a covenant? Well, a covenant is when you, when you get saved, you come in covenant with God. Yeah. And if I was to come up here with an umbrella, whenever, whenever I got saved, God gave me an umbrella. And I could carry that umbrella around, and I could be in covenant with God. And that's where a lot of the church is today, is they're saved. They got the umbrella of the covenant, and they're carrying it around. But God says sometimes, you know, if I walk outside this door right here, and it's raining on the outside, uh, and I got the covenant in my hand, but I'm not using it, then I'm going to get wet. But once I pop that umbrella of the covenant up and I hold it over me and I get under the protection of the Almighty, I can go outside that door right there and it doesn't matter how hard it's raining, it can be raining sideways and I'll stay dry because I'm under covenant. See, what David knew was, David knew that, hey, I, I, I've already slew a bear, I've already slew a lion, I know that my God's got my back and I know that I'm under covenant. And this daggone uncircumcised Philistine, he's coming up here and y'all ain't even ready that he ain't got no protection. He ain't got nobody that's, that's going to protect him. And what the Bible says was, David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And he said it more than once. He said it twice in 
in there. He, he was calling him by who he was. And, and the rest of them didn't know what was going on and they, they couldn't see it. But I want to tell you this morning, when you realize who you are, when you realize that you've got a covering that's got your back, when you realize that the, the covenant you made with God at an old, old fashioned altar or at your house or wherever you accepted God in your life, you have become into a covenant with Him and He wants to protect you. But if you walk around and not know about that covenant, if you don't know that that covenant is for you, you can carry it around and you can be saved and you can, you can come to church and you can sing songs and you can do all those things. But when you really realize who you are. When you realize who you are, that God has a covenant with you. Amen. All these giants that's coming in your life, all these giants that's making noise towards you, all these giants that's, that's, that's calling out your name, and all these giants that are, are just, just torturing you day in and day out. When you realize that anything that's not of God has no covenant. Anything that is not of God has no covenant. So if it's coming against you, God says that, that He wishes that we have good, that we, that we have the great things, that we, have the, that we are the head and not the tail. So if it's coming against you, it's not of God. So it's not in the covenant. I want to talk to you about what a giant is. A giant is anything in your life that looms large. Anything that you look at in your life that looms large is a giant. Anything. And I wrote down a few things. It could be a person. It could be a place. It could be a thing. It could be a thought. It could be a mindset. It could be an addiction. It could be a generational curse. It could be a weakness. It could be, it could even be a religious upbringing. Anything that taunts you. Anything that comes against you. And I, I promise you that everybody here this morning has a has a giant or has had a giant in your life. But the thing about it is, is it's not, just, it's not just that, John. See, David, David went on after, after he slew the life. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. But in 2 Samuel 8, David won all the battles from chapter 1 to 14. And then 1 Chronicles 18, he was in battles again. One through, verse 1 through 12, David had victories again. David's army killed all of Goliath's brothers. 1 Samuel Saul even comes after David. That's a giant. Saul comes after him. In 2 Samuel, he has adultery with Bathsheba. And then he arranges the death of her husband, Uriah. His son, Amon, went sideways and committed rape. Y'all know it. And Absalom slew him. And then, then his son, Absalom, got murdered. And David, David about went crazy. And David ignored Joab and took a census and caused a plague to come upon the land. And David wants to, to build a temple, but God tells him that after he wants to build a temple, God says, you have blood upon your hands. So, so Goliath was just the first giant. Yes. Goliath was just the first giant. And I believe I'm talking to people this morning that say, once I get past this giant, it just seems like there's always another one at the gate coming into my life. Uh, after I get by that giant, it seems like something else is popping up. And, and then uh, after I get past that one, then there's something else coming up. I want to tell you that there's always going to be opposition. It don't matter what, who you are and how big your Bible is, there's always going to be opposition coming against you. But my Bible says that we have a covenant, we have an advocate with the Father that says that He's going to protect us, that He's going to bless us, that He's going to show us so faithful. And no matter what comes against you, you have a covenant. Amen. You have a covenant to overcome that. This is what gets me right here. Right after David realized what, what the deal was, he said, this guy doesn't have a covenant with God. He wasn't even looking at how big the giant was. He just, he just seen that he didn't have a covenant. And it said, Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab was angry. His anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comest thou here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down just to watch the battle. He's saying, What are you doing? You're just coming down here just to watch. He was mocking David. And David said, What, what have I done to you to make you feel this way? That's what he was saying. Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another, and he spake after the same manner. 
And the people answered him again after the former manner. And then the words were heard from David spake, and he rehearsed him before Saul. They went and told Saul that David was saying that he would fight Goliath. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. He's saying, don't, Y'all don't give up because of him, because thy servant, I'll, I'll go fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art no, not able to go against the Philistine and fight with him, for thou art you, are, you, you are just a little youth. And he a man of war from his youth. He's been fighting a long time. He's a champion. David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and he slew the lion and the bear. And we're going to go on down. And verse 36 says, I slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall lose, shall be as one of those, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And we're going we're gonna to go on down to verse 43. David went down to fight him. Y'all know the story. Saul tried to put his armor on him and it wouldn't work. And David said, I have to use what God's gave me. That's my gift. I've got to use it. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that thou comest against me with a staff? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Right there's where he messed up. He was, he was taught in the armies of Israel, but when David got there, he made it a spiritual battle. He said, he... he Cursed him by his gods. And David said, Listen, Philistine, you don't know who you're talking to because my God's way greater than any God that you can serve. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's saying, Look, you done messed up now because you done made it a spiritual battle. See, the things that in our life, they're not, they're not, you're not ever going to walk outside these doors and see a nine foot six giant unless he's an NBA player. And you're not going to walk out here and see that. But see, the things that we fight that are not are not flesh and blood. They're, they're of principalities in the darkness and the power of the wicked. And we're going to fight things that, that we don't see. But anything that looms large in your life is a giant. Y'all want to get with me this morning. Anything that looms large is a giant. Anything that's keeping you from your destiny and keeping you from where you're going is a giant. Amen? Anything's a giant that's trying to keep you from getting to where you're going. And in verse 46, he said, This day the Lord delivered thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and feet to the fowls of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that God, that God is the God of in Israel. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. See, so what David did right there is, is uh, I think about one, I think about it, uh, we, was out, we was out there playing basketball yesterday, and I was watching them, and it didn't matter how much you coached them and how much you told them what to do, whoever, whoever had the basketball got all the attention. You could have five players over here, and you could throw the ball over there, and all five players would run to the ball. Because that ball was what made the difference. Mm -hmm. I come to tell you this morning that, that sometimes you got to pass it off. <laughs> sometimes you got to realize that you've got somebody in your corner that you can pass it off to. Amen. Sometimes you got to realize that no, no matter how hard the game gets, no matter what's going on, you got somebody that you can pass the ball to. And when you pass it off to God, all the attention is going to go from you and you're going to make it a spiritual battle. And when you make it a spiritual battle, then you can overcome it. But you can't overcome it as long as you try to hold on to it for yourself. Amen. We was out, we was out there walking one day, and this is just what came to my mind when I was thinking about it. And we we had been fishing at, at, at Cabot's Creek, and we was walking back out the road, and there were some guys down along the bank, and they was fishing. And and, and Connor was out in front of me, my boy was out in front of me, and then all of a sudden I heard him screaming. And he came running, and he was running, and right on his heels was a dog, and that dog was trying to eat him up. That dog was trying to bite him, that dog was after him. But when he got to me, when he could get to me, he knew that he was protected. Yeah. I want to tell somebody this morning, if you can that you, you can take your problems, it doesn't matter how bad it seems yeah. at the time, but when you can take your problems and you can hand it over to God, and your problems don't seem so big anymore. Uh, that, dog, that dog was not very really big, but to him it seemed like a giant. Uh, but when he got beside his father, when he got beside his father, he realized, I'm protected. I know that no matter what's coming after me, I know he's got my back. Yeah. And what did old dad do? Dad sent the dog back down to where it belonged. And I was pretty upset about it. 
And I don't know how Christian I was acting. <laughs> but, but I told the guy that owned the dog, I said, you better put it on the leash. And he pretty much said, what are you going to do about it? I said, you don't want to know what I'm going to do about it. Because I'll tell you right now, uh, if it bites my son, it's going to be a fight on your hands. Because I know that I got his back. Now God says to you this morning, you got to know that he's got your back. And he ain't going to let nothing come against you. But you got to let him know. If he would have fought that dog on his own, he would have got to end up. But he knew where he had to go when he jumped to me out of the protection. you got to quit fighting it on your own. you got to quit fighting it on your own. The battle's not yours. It's not, a, it's not a battle that you can win. You can't fight it on your own. David realized that he was out of covenant. David realized that Goliath didn't have no covering. And here David is walking around with an umbrella and this rain and he ain't getting a drop of water on him because he's underneath the covering of God Almighty. He does slew the bear, he does slew the lion, he knew what was up. He said, this guy ain't no different. This guy ain't no different than what, what I just come out of. But, but to everybody else that wasn't, that wasn't thinking, they had the same covenant that David had. They had the same covenant that David had, but they was just walking around not using it. Once he realized that he could use his covenant against the, the giant, that's when everything changed. And the Bible says that he delivered him up. The Bible says he went down and took five stones. Y'all know the story. And everybody else, all through that first chapter I, did, chapter I just read to you, every time Goliath spoke, they would run and tremble in fear. If they seen Goliath, they would run and tremble in fear. But my Bible says when when David drew near him, that he hastily went running towards him. Uh, that's the difference in having God in your corner. You can go towards your problem and not even be worried about it. When he got there, he drew up on that giant. And I believe he got close enough to see him. My Bible says that he, he had 126 pounds of armor on. Amen. There wasn't nothing uncovered. Everything, his legs, his back, his, his chest, his arms, everything was covered. Except for one place he left uncovered. That's where the battle's at. Amen. Where's the battle at? Right here. Amen. Right here between your eyes. That's where your battle's at. That's where yeah. my battle's at. That's where the life left uncovered. And the only thing David could do, he said, this is a spiritual battle. He could have threw rocks at him all day long and hit him in the chest and it wouldn't have hurt him. He could have threw rocks all day long and hit him, hit him in the legs and the back and the, the top of the head. And nothing but, but when he hit him right there between the eyes, that giant fell immediately. Amen. Sometimes you've got to make it a battle. So the battle's up here in your mind. And, and whenever you're walking around and, and you wake up in the morning and the giant's screaming at you, the battle's right here. You've got to hit that giant right between the eyes and let him know that my God has my back. My God has my covering. My God is greater than any giant. My God is greater than any problem. My God is greater than any addiction. My God is greater than anything that we've done in the past. My God is greater than religion. My God is greater than everything. We serve an awesome God that wants to protect you. But the problem is we carry around that umbrella and we never use it. We never use that covenant. We'll come to church and we'll pray about it. And we'll go back home and listen to the giant scream. We'll come to church time and time again. The Bible says He come for 40 days. Man, it's a long time to be scared. Can you imagine coming up every time thinking, man, somebody's going to fight this guy. And when you get ready to step out and fight your giant, let me tell you what's going to happen. The same thing that Saul told David. Sometimes, sometimes you, you really need support, but you're not really going to get it a lot of times. Saul said, go and make me the Lord be with you. <laughs> he said, oh, buddy, you go on and take care of it, and I'll be praying for you from back here. Sometimes that's what happens. See, because we fight giants that sometimes we can't even talk about. We fight giants sometimes that we can't... If, if you come up here and told me every giant you fought, uh, you would think that I would disqualify you this morning. Yes. If you truly told everybody the giants of your past, maybe the ones that you got past, maybe the ones that are still screaming at you time and time again, every morning and every evening, if, you, if, if we really knew what you were battling this morning, See, sometimes it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Amen. That's what David said. David said, you know, it don't matter. 
I don't, he told Saul, he said, I don't need your armor. I don't need your support. I don't care if my brothers are talking about me, making fun of me. I don't care because I know, you know, and there was there was a lot of things that the Bible said that he would get the king's daughter, that he would get riches, he wouldn't have to pay taxes. So he was doing that. What his brothers didn't realize was he was setting his whole family up for success. Amen. Just by taking on one giant that everybody else was scared of. He was setting him up. He was setting him up. Just because of the covenant. Just because of the covenant. I just blew these notes off the pieces, but I want to tell you this morning that, that the closer you are to God, the smaller your giants are seen this morning. Amen. Amen. You know, if you look at it from a long way out, I know I know that when I went through my personal struggles, you, you talk about, and I know many of you in here has been through sickness, and, and many of you in here has been through addiction, and many of you in here has been through things that's that's that was really a really big giant in your life. And the first time that you ever tried to fight it, and when you was a long way off, I can remember those personal struggles when I was so far away from God and how big that problem seemed. Amen. But the closer I drew, the closer I drew, the closer I drew, the closer I drew, the more, the more it looked like I was going to be able to win. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, God just sent me here this morning to tell you that that you have a destiny on the inside of you. Each and every one of you here this morning has something on the inside. And we've been preaching it, we've been preaching it, we've been preaching it. But I believe that I believe that there, there's, there's roadblocks in your life, and we're going to call those roadblocks spiritual giants this morning. Something that's held you back, something that's disqualified you, something that's talked down to you, something that's that's really just keeping you from flowing in things that God wants for you. Satan wants to keep it a physical battle this morning. He wants to keep it a physical battle. He wants to come to you and and just chirp to you in your in your ear and tell you how bad it is. That's what that, that's what he does. He comes to you and tells you how bad the situation is. He comes to you and tells you how bad you are. He comes to you and tells you how how uh, big your giant is this morning. And as long as we keep it a, a physical battle, as long as we keep it in the physical place, that sickness is going to seem insurmountable. That addiction is going to seem in. Like it's so hard to overcome. But when you realize that you have a covenant with the Father. When you realize that what He did on Calvary 2,000 years ago. When you realize that what He did. Because of what He did you could be here this morning in covenant with Him. And that your giant could fall. Not because of who you are. But because of who He is. Because it's all about Him this morning. Yes. It's all about Him this morning. Stand to your feet with me this morning. I'm going to keep you going. God knew who was going to be here. God knew what was going to happen and God knew that 
giants that was in y'all's life before you ever should have known. I feel this this morning that somebody needs to realize that you have a covenant with God. Somebody needs to realize this morning who you are. When you realize who you are, when you realize who your daddy is, you realize that Father God has your back. You may seem like you're in a dark room and, and, and you're, you're a little kid and you're in there and you're scared of the dark. I always thought it was awesome. It didn't matter how big the, the monster was in the closet. It didn't matter how big, how big the, the giant seemed to be under the bed or whatever it was when the kid was sitting in the room and they were scared. And when the, the dad or the mom come in and they cut the light on. It's like some of you just need to cut the light on this morning and reveal that thing. Reveal that thing that's coming against you because, because really it's not even as big as you think it is once you bring it to light. Once you bring it to light, it ain't near as big as you thought it was. Once you realize that, that Dad's there and he's got you back, and, and I can remember going in Connor's room, cutting the light on, once, or, and laying down with me and, and just putting my arms around him and saying, Son, it don't matter what you think's in here. It don't matter what you think's in the closet. It don't matter what you think's under the bed because Dad's here now and I got your back. There ain't nothing coming against you. There ain't nothing going to come in here and bother you because I'm here. I want y'all to realize that's how God feels about you this morning. Amen. That's how God feels about each and every one of you this morning. When, and He cares about your problems. He cares about each one of you this morning. Yeah. As she sings, I just want you to search your heart. And you know who you are. You know what the giants are. I believe we all have them. I believe we all have them. But I also believe if we don't deal with them, they'll keep coming back day after day after day, screaming at us and telling us what we are and how, how we're nothing and how, how they're always going to be there. And, but I think this morning that we can deal with those things. If that's you this morning while she sings, y'all search your heart. If that's you and you want to get rid of that joint that's been haunting you, it could have been haunting you from a kid even. It could have been there for 40 years. It could have been there for 20 years. It could have been there for two days. I don't know how long it's been there. But if you want to get past this giant, and when you get past the giant, I believe this morning that you're going to propel into your destiny because it's standing between you and where God wants you to be.